Hello, I'm Danny. And I'm Debbie. And we are two middle-aged women who make things up to make each other laugh. And we also like to make our mothers laugh. <laughs> We'd like to make all of your mothers laugh as well. Bring us your mothers, why don't you? They'd like us, they'd get us. And uh, when we say middle-aged, uh, that's a guess, because I don't know when I'm going to die. Mm. So. You could be quarter-aged. I could be full-aged. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you do, like, doing Bright Club, you're like, oh, it's the smart, this is a smart night. And uh, so I started to think about my educational experience. I felt like I had to come up and tell you about it. Uh, but I don't think any of you want to hear about how acting classes can cause nervous breakdowns. <laughs> because I want to save that for my very self-indulgent one-woman show. Sorry. But there isn't any other kind of one-woman show. No, not the way I'm going to do it. Mm. No. Uh, we're going to do one of our more classy sketches for you this evening. I say more classy. That doesn't mean mm. it's classy. No. It just means it's more classy than the other ones. Yeah. Uh, and we wrote this because I loved Jane Austen too much <laughs> as a teenager, too too, too much. Yeah. I didn't realize that they were actually, uh, you know. Well, I mean, you were, you were wrapped up in the top hats, you were wrapped up in the scarves and the gazes across the room and... I didn't know there were social comedies about status. No yes. idea. <laughs> I mean, you, you missed the fundamental idea behind all of them that it is Chuchet La Maison. Yes, a big house and the having of cash. Mm. <laughs> very cash, important. Cash, cash, cash. But also, there were some very nice letters written. Yes. You know, kind of, uh, the sort of letters, I'm just gonna get into costume while we talk. Uh, <laughs> the sort of letters that, you know, really could make a woman feel very special. Uh, I'm sure you all have a favorite, uh, Jane Austen, hero or heroine? Everybody does. Yeah, um, <laughs> mine is uh, <laughs> Captain Wentworth from Persuasion. Uh, look at him. That is our very own, the island of Ireland's Kieran Hines. Be look proud at him. of him. He look at his big, sexy Easter Island head. <laughs> I'm actually very sorry. His big, sexy Rapa Nui head. Yes. Uh, look how gorgeous he is, and he's got a naval uniform. He is more than we deserve. Like, my underwear is disintegrating <laughs> right now. When you love. Google him on the bus home, you'll all be surprised at how well he's doing for himself. Very well. He's still keeping it rugged. Yes. <laughs> still gorgeous to this day. He's just an older gent. Um, but just to give an example of a, a gorgeous letter from Captain Wentworth, I'm going to just give you a little taste. Just brace yourself. Wet your whistle. Yeah. <laughs> and this is actual Jane Austen shit, yeah? So be respectful. Um, <laughs> I can listen no longer in silence. I must speak to you by such means as are within my reach. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Tell me not that I am too late, that such precious feelings are gone forever. I offer myself to you again with a heart even more your own than when you almost broke it eight years and a half ago. Dare not say that man forgets sooner than woman, that his love has an earlier death. I have loved none but you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> has anybody ever received a letter like that? Anybody? If you have, don't tell us. We don't want you to know. Don't tell anyone that you've received a letter like that because it's boasting. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is Ireland. Yeah? We don't like that. <laughs> Keep it to yourself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are other kinds of uh, love correspondence yes. that a lady can receive. And yes. They, they can stay with you. Uh, the sort of stain that can't be wiped out no matter how many Regency romances you read. <laughs> because while history has had its Captain Wentworths, there are also creeps. There will always be creeps. There are creeps right now. <laughs> all around us. In case you can't tell, I'm a man now. I've got a hat on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Costume. 
It's called theatre. I'm a very rich Regency lady. I have prospects. Mm. <laughs> Brace yourself for love. Mm. My dear Miss Carstairs, I shall not dissimulate. I have written to you upon a matter most serious, the matter of love. When I stared upon the portrait of you which hangs in your brother's drawing room, I wondered, and indeed I prayed, that the creature it depicted might truly be as beautiful as the painting itself. Although I knew nothing of you, your voice, your mind, your very hopes and dreams, I am quite sure I loved you upon my first sight of this magnificently framed version of your little face. My eyes were full of canvas, oil, pigment, and above all, hope. Therefore, when I finally set my eyes upon your corporeal form in Lord Hartnell's ballroom, I breathed out a gusty sigh of relief and inhaled a cloud of the sweetest love, for lo, the painter was not a fraud, and you were indeed an angel upon this cruel earth. And although you did not speak even once during our waltz, I could tell that you were already deeply in love with me. <laughs> the way you held yourself away from me, the teasing manner in which you avoided all eye contact. <laughs> you could not hide the passion within your trembling heart. Please, dear girl, do not take it amiss, but I have commissioned a portrait of my personal endowments so that you may know exactly what I bring to our doubtless long and happy marriage. Tell me, tell me, my angel, that I may come to the Grange and ask your father for his permission to make you mine. Yours lovingly, P.D. Dunforth. Who? <laughs> Dear Mr. Dunforth, firstly, let me thank you for the undue honour that you place upon me by offering me the chance to be your helpmeet. I feel this condescension deeply and am grateful. However, sir, I feel that I would be uh, nothing but a common jade if I did not tell you that I love another. And although he is as yet toiling beneath Admiral Nelson and manfully keeping the seas free from Frenchness, <laughs> when he returns I have already promised to be his bride and to be held within his masculine embrace until we both succumb to the cruelty of time, or possibly typhus. <laughs> Although this is not common knowledge, my brother is aware of this, and I had hoped he might inform you. Once again, please understand that I am all asunder with the thought of disappointing you, particularly given the incident with your breaches during the waltz and I am shocked that you could consider making one so foolish and unworthy your bride. Please forgive me. Yours sorrowfully, Alice Carstairs. <laughs> Dear Ms. Jade, congratulations on your cruel plan. It has worked, and my heart lies broken upon my very finest Arabian carpet, <laughs> ground to a fine dust beneath your slippered foot. Of course, your brother may have mentioned a previous alliance, but I believe that our love was stronger than that. I believe that you were stronger than that. Oh, cruel woman, cruel indeed to break such a delicate thing as true and pure admiration. 
Might I add that contrary to my previous avowal, the portrait in your brother's drawing room flatters you monstrously. <laughs> For now that I think about your appearance, I will not be unconvinced that you are harboring a curling tail beneath those pretty muslin dresses you wear. Such light and bright finery that makes you appear a beacon on the shore to a loveless ship seeking the safe dock of marriage. In fact, you're a siren calling innocent men to their doom on the rocks that surround your hard heart. Speaking of sailors, I hope that the only embrace that your beloved gentleman mariner receives is the embrace of the canvas as he is stitched through the nose and sent to his eternal rest in the briny deep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, madam, you are correct. I hope that he dies. <laughs> and given your poor sign countenance, it means swine like you whorish dunce. I trust that you'll become accustomed to a long and lonely spinsterhood. I also hope you become blinded and die beneath the wheels of a curricle. <laughs> Yours heart achingly, P.D. Dunforth. Well, he's got an addendum. His breeches were apparently wholly undisturbed by my presence. <laughs> he was staring at someone else during our waltz. And he wants the portrait of his endowment back. You will have no more pleasure from me, madam. It's in the dog's basket. There was no block and delete in those days. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we'll raffle that off later, yeah?